Hello everyone and thank you for watching this video. This is Jose Maria Martin Olaya speaking. I am professor at the Faculty of Physics in the University of Seville in Andalusia, Spain. This video dissertation will explain how human activity adapts to season helped by clock changing, summertime arrangement, daylight saving time or DST. I will present the 47th parallel as a critical parallel to understand the occurrence of summertime arrangement. And I will address the European Commission to allow opt-outs in this issue. I am not an English native speaker, I will be speaking in the unofficial language of science, functional, simplified, but English. Sorry for any inconvenience. Many people think of seasonal clock changing as a disturbing or fascinating practice in their otherwise highly regular life. A cup of one hour equally felt at 60 degrees of latitude in Finland and at 40 degrees of latitude in Portugal. It is hardly the case. Among these people we have the European Commission which recently issued a proposal to end, to end DST in the Union. The big mistake is not allowing opt-outs in the name of the functioning of the internal market. I will challenge this. Latitude is a key factor for understanding human behavior, seasons and seasonal clock changing. Europe spans over a wide and critical range of latitudes. The 47th parallel just divides the Union. Natural phenomena occurring at the 60th parallel do not occur at the 40th parallel, and we distinctly fit to this distinctly natural condition. Here you can see the occurrence of seasonal clock changing in the world. Two things are worthy to note. First, occurrence is stratified with latitude. Clock changing seldom occurs in the tropics because their seasonal effects are pretty small. Clock changing mostly occurs in the grey bands outside the tropics and inside the 47th parallel. The tropics lie at the axial tilt of the planet, 23.5 degrees either side of the equator. 47 is just twice the axial tilt. Now the second point to understand is that six countries have local clock changing rules. Their internal markets survive to these rules. More. Local rules to fit to these critical parallels in four of these countries. Now let's see why latitude and the 47th parallel play an interesting role. Here in this picture I will show you two relevant physical parameters for human activity, insulation at noon and sunrise time. The sun is outside the plot on the right. Solar rays are coming from the, from the right to the left. They heat with the highest efficiency at the subsolar point noted by the red thick ray in the middle of the incoming beam. Noon is occurring there and no, cash, no shadow is cast. This is 100% efficiency. Noon is happening at the subsolar meridian in the right semicircle of the, of the picture. Insulation efficiency decreases and shadows increase as the Earth bends away due to curvature. On the opposite side it is midnight. In the middle, we can see the line dividing the light and dark hemispheres. Earth rotates from left to right, so we are looking at the sunrise line. Sunrise is happening along the meridian in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean at 6 a.m. Sunrise occurred one hour earlier at the, at the points marked 7 a.m. and two hours earlier at the points marked 8 a.m. It will occur one hour later at the points market 5 a.m. and it will occur two hours later at the points market 4 a.m. The setting is that of the September equinox. As the Earth orbits the Sun, this setting is very much altered. The simulation will keep the line of shadow upright and the incoming solar rays horizontally. The Earth will apparently tilt. This is not the standard way of looking at the Earth. We are familiar with upright meridians. Now the Earth looks like waggling, and at the December solstice the tilting is maximum, 23.5 degrees. The line of shadow keeps us still, but sunrises do not occur along meridians any longer. As the Earth turns back towards June solstice, it apparently travels 47 degrees. That will be noted in sunrise times, but also at noon insulation. Circles of latitude swing back and forth to the incoming beam, causing the seasonal variability of noon insulation. Only the equator keeps within the subtropical region year-round. Notice that the same keeps the incoming beam and the levels on the right still, 
we are not familiar to that either. The wobbling is apparent. The rotation axis of the Earth is always pointing towards the polar star. I will now focus on the solstices. This is the setting in the December solstice. The sun is rising on the equator somewhere in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean at 6 a.m. solar time. The sun rose two hours ago in Africa where it is now 8 a.m. On the same meridian in Europe at 47 degrees latitude the sun is now rising, four hours before noon. As you can see, sunrise time lags as you move away from the equator. That delays human activity as well. Notice another striking difference. Insulation at noon is 92% efficient at the equator. It is only 40% efficient in Europe. People at the equator have many outcomes to start doing things by 6 a.m. The sun is rising and you must forecast noon insulation. Not so many outcomes at 47 degrees latitude for a start doing things by 6 a.m. The sun is well below horizon, it is called. Noon insulation poses no threat. Now let's see the June solstice. Things at the equator are exactly the same. The only difference is where the sun is pointing at noon. Things at the 47th parallel in Europe are all the way different. The sun rose four hours earlier. But by 8 a.m. and 4 hours to noon, people sink it to clocks are still starting doing things. Worse, insulation at noon will be as high as at the equator. Indeed, below the 47th parallel, insulation at noon will be greater than at the equator. Therefore, people can find many outcomes for starting doing things earlier. And that is nowadays set by seasonal clock changing. I will now describe how human activity adapts to the seasonal varying dark and light conditions. I will make use of 24-hour analog dial clocks, like the Sheffer clock on display at the gate of the observatory in Greenwich. We are less familiar to them, but they are very convenient to envision a full revolution of the Earth in the following discussion. We have noon at 12, we have midnight at 0, therefore we have morning hours on the right and we have afternoon hours on the left. If the, if the rotation axis were in tilted, or if tilted at an equinox, or at the equator, sunrise would occur at 6 a.m. and sunset at 18, 6 p.m. Therefore, we have the night on top and we have daylight on bottom. Unlike that, the seasonal light and dark cycle depends on the tilting angle, which is given, and then on latitude. Therefore, I will be placing three clocks, one at the 40th parallel, the latitude of New York, Lisbon, Madrid, Naples or Athens inside the 47th range, a second one at, 50, at the 52nd parallel, the latitude of London and Berlin and outside the 47th parallel, and the last one at the 61st parallel, that of Helsinki, just close to the polar circle. Clocks will be ticking mean solar time or, if preferred, they will be located at time meridians. You'll need local time offset to get local time values, and that includes one full hour, hour if DSD applies. With axial tilting, daylight decreases with increase in latitude in winter, and daylight increases with increase in latitude in summer. Merging seasons, we have the shortest daylight around noon, the shortest night around midnight, and the regions of swinging light conditions at sunrise on the right, and at sunset on the left. Differences related to latitude are significant. Notice that in any case, the latter sunset and the latter sunrise are separated by 12 hours. So are the earliest sunrise and sunset. Many social decisions are not related to noon or midnight, the bare meaning of clock hours. Instead, they are related to sunrise or sunset. That's why axial tilt and seasonal differences are so important. One significant decision is when human activity should start. Should it vary with seasons? Should it keep still year-round? The span of sunrise time, hence the longitude, influences the answer. Also, noon insulation plays a role. I will again provide a very simplistic answer, albeit somewhat useful. A first answer is activity starts by winter sunrise, when permanent daylight begins. Fit to this mark and your activity will always occur after sunrise. 
allow 2 hours from wake up time to start doing things and 8 hours of sleep time and bedtime would occur safely at night. As sunrise smoothly advances and noon insulation increases, societies have found outcomes in smoothly advancing human activity. After clocks gained significance, change in timing was necessary. As early as 1810, the National Assembly in Spain advanced the timing of their sitting one hour in spring and switched back in autumn. I can tell you that was not meant for energy saving but for preventing noon insulation. This is an early example of seasonal adaptation bound to clocks, featuring every leg of DSD, including the one hour step. Instead of seasonal timing, govern governments figure out clock changing as an appropriate way of undergoing this natural process in the second decade of the past century. Bound to clocks, we've lost the opportunity of a smoothly advancing human activity. Five minutes of clock changing every weekend from January to April is just impossible, for instance. Advanced activity puts some pressure on bedtimes. In the worst case sunset, is the, the worst case sunset is now 11 hours from labor start, still enough for bedtimes to occur after sunset. I will identify this setting as type 1. Among others, we have this setting in Great Britain, Ireland, Portugal, Italy, or United States. It is interesting to note that at 40 degrees, the practice also promotes the synchronizing role of sunrise. People experience sunrise from the wake up time in summer to the starting point of the activity in winter. This comes due to the lowest span of sunrise times at this range. One may now think in the scores of holding the advance to the next winter. Usually, but not always, that meant that mean permanent summer time. It is implicit that human activity must start advanced relative to winter sunrise. That is not natural, you'll need artificial light. And you'll need an outcome to sustain that, the outcome is related to the winter sunset. Think of the end of labor activity by winter, allow 8 hours of labor activity at 1 hour of lunch break, making up 9 hours. At 40 degrees, starting at winter sunrise makes you end just before winter sunset. But at 52 degrees latitude, the same setting makes labor activity end well after winter sunset. Delayed winter sunrise does not delay winter sunset. On the contrary, winter sunset comes earlier. Advanced winter activity is tricky and sometimes fails. Outcomes indeed increase with increasing latitude. You just trade labor in the darkness for the evening to down. I will identify this non-seasonal set setting as type 2. Saskatchewan in Canada or Magallanes in Chile, among other places above the 47th circle of latitude, follow this setting. In 2015, most of Chile filed to sustain permanent DST, but the polar region, mo the polar most region of Magallanes agreed to that. It is a great example of the influence of latitude in this issue. Now, even with this early timing, clock changing may still apply. That promotes a further advance whose outcome is less evident. For instance, some pressure is put on bedtimes. Labor start is now 10 hours from summer sunset. I will identify the setting as type 3. Germany and Poland, for instance, have summer times arrangement and their starting times are also advanced in winter. A funny point with this setting is that now people sometimes try to discontinue DST by switching to permanent summer time, as in type 2. That makes starting times two hours earlier than winter sunrise and this is usually too much of an advance. Perhaps this was the issue in Russia when in 2011 switched to permanent summer time and in 2014 switched back to permanent winter time. However, at 60 degrees latitude the starting times come usually two hours before winter sunrise because winter sunrise is too much delayed. Even in this case clock changing is still applied in Finland, Scandinavia or the Baltic countries. Now there is even more pressure on bedtimes because labor start comes only nine hours after sun sunset. I will identify this setting as type 5. 
The larger span of sunrise times and sunset times makes people find an outcome in a non-seasonal behavior, like in Saskatchewan or Magallanes. Just accommodate the starting point and then keep it year-round. You will witness the changes in the light in light condition from December to June. Iceland is most, li most likely accommodated to that since the 60s. This is type 4 setting and it is non-seasonal. It is all the way understandable that Finland or the Baltic states wanted to switch to type 4 discontinuum DST. One or of seasonal clock changing is not equally felt everywhere as you can see. I've put a special emphasis in describing clock changing as a seasonal adaptation of human activity, its raw meaning. Indeed, I did not make any clock changing in the pictures, I just placed the human activity accordingly. Clock changing is not about energy saving. Energy saving explains why governments trigger the practice how it was so. It does not explain why it was necessary and why it succeeded. People just found outcomes in many circumstances because it is not arbitrarily onset or offset. Regulations follow natural phenomena which is, will still stand still. Seasons will not cease to exist and to influence human behavior. This continuing DST will trigger some fundamental questions. When should activity start in winter? When should activity start in summer? Should we keep year-round timing? Should we have seasonal timing? Unadvertently, we have been already answering these questions, influenced by DST. The answer is pretty much local. The variety of arrangements shown in the pictures is an evidence of that. There is not a unique seasonal adaptation. Harmonies and rules are, of course, necessary, but they shouldn't be extended up to the binary choice either ban DST or make them compulsory in such a large area as the, Euro as the European Union is. Finland should retain every right to discontinue DST, as well as Portugal should retain every right to continue DST after 100 years of practice. The Commission should fit to its primary role, harmonies in the dates of transition for member states willing to practice clock changing. Before that role, every member state transitioned at their will, and time in Europe was a mess. Now it is coordinated up to the level of one second. That is really in the benefit of the proper functioning of the internal market. Aside, one thing should be adjusted, and of DST should come by late September instead of late October, and even partitioning of the year. Many other preferences play a role in this problem. That includes geography, neighbors, habits. Japan or South Korea at 40 degrees latitude have seldom made use of summer times arrangement. Britain is prone to DST, Germany is more reluctant, being close in latitude. All these suge just suggest the Commission must allow opt-outs in this issue. Hope you have enjoyed this dissertation. Most of, the, of it is based in some analysis of human activity from time use surveys. You can find them on the internet. Item 1 analyzes social timing in 17 European countries. Item 2 analyzes sleep timing in industrial societies and in subtropical pre-industrial societies with and without access to artificial light. Item 3 is a comment on the issue of the impact of DST on public health. To put it briefly, we should consider the impact of non-seasonal behavior in public health. Also, you may find interest in these op-eds on this topic published in Spanish. A translator may help if needed. This video presentation came to you thanks to these terrific pieces of software. I thank very much Carlos Herranz at Colegio Oficial de Físicos for fruitful suggestions. Thank you very much for having watched.